Mike's Daily Podcast. That's the intro to the show. Hello, it is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley. FFF episode 913. Hello, Haley is back. Hey, I was I was really worried that you weren't going to go at the episode. That's like my favorite part of the whole show. Oh, really? FFF episode. Today we talk to Mike's Daily Podcast. Madam Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison Bentley, and now the jingle is going to sing again. Mike's Daily Podcast. So, Haley, on the last show, I mentioned my apprehension about plumbers and clog pipes that have a stinky the stuff I shall not mention but I got out my anger that uh, with a turn with an extension of a drain that cleaned out my drain with a lot of toil and tension ah oh, boy Mike's daily podcast I can't read my writing with these lyrics I have worked a thousand times harder on that Mike's oh yeah when I'm Daily An auger Podcast Is this thing that you use Yeah Like the plumbers have the big snake thing That they go into your pipe with Right An auger is something you can buy At Home Depot And you can like Shove it into the pipe But it takes a lot of work I'd assume so, yeah And then uh, I Was able to clean it out really quickly Hey, Mike. I Ma- did that at 9 o'clock last night, too, so I'm a little That's tired. That's impressive. Yes, go ahead, Haley. What's on the back of that paper that you ri- wrote all that stuff on? So, uh, as you know, I was married. Right. And the uh, woman that I married uh, was a hairstylist. Really? And so this is actually from one of her cosmetology classes. Here, um, you can look at it and try and make head or tails out of it. It looks like it's like a cartoon of... What? Step one, wash your hands with a roll of toilet paper nearby that needs changing pretty soon. Okay. Step two, look at a desk. Step three, look charge your psychic powers. <laughs> Step four, slip your four fingers into like a half glove thing. Uh. Step five, um, continue to work on your psychic powers with dots on your face. Okay. Step six: stick your thumb out a little bit while it's in the uh, in the glove thing. Step and seven: like poke your cheeks a lot, I guess. Uh, Step eight: curve your thumb in the glove thing. Okay. Step nine: drill a hole in your head. Step ten: bounce some boxes near the desk. And step eleven: just wash your hands again near the uh, that same roll of toilet paper that really needs changing pretty soon. All right. Well, what do you think that is instructing you what to do? I'm guessing it's witchcraft. Witchcraft. So my ex-wife was actually learning witchcraft instead of cosmetology. Did you know that it takes like 1,400 hours to be a licensed hair cutter slash cosmetologist person? Oh, my gosh. That's yes. why I didn't see her for the first couple of years of our marriage. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, I was working n- nights at a radio station, and you know, people would be like, "Don't worry, Mike, you will be with your wife soon, even though you're both really busy. You'll be with her in spirit." And uh, now I'm not with her at all. Oh, that's so sad. Why did I just take it there to the <laughs> sad place? Look who just walked in. Hey, oh my God, Masters, this is my dog. Oh, hello, Haley, how are you? Speaking, speaking of witchcraft. Speaking of witchcraft, I am not a witch. I am not a, why would you call me such a dirty, horrible one? That sounds like something a witch would say. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a Wikipedia, is so I'm into Wikipedia. Oh, he, she's into Wikipedia instead of Wicca. Instead of Wicca, Wikipedia. Wicca, Wikipedia. Hey, that brings, that dovetails nicely into what I found online about uh, Russia waging war with Wikipedia. Dun, Russia has banned the whole of Wikipedia over dun, an, dun, dun. an entry about Charas. Is that, is that the Chara, the, the singer? Coochie, coochie. 
And then she plays the acoustic guitar. And I'm going to sing to you a song about Haley's beautiful hair. That was I literally never heard of Charas. Is a it says is a, a hashish form of cannabis which is handmade in India, Lebanon, Pakistan, Nepal, and Jamaica, but not Russia, which makes the reasoning behind the ban somewhat incomprehensible. Uh, the okay, so wait, they're banning the entirety of Wikipedia because Wikipedia wrote an article about a type of marijuana that you can't even get in Russia. Those crazy Russians. Those crazy Russians. Wah, wah, wah. This comes just weeks after Russia blocked Reddit because of a thread discussing magic mushrooms. Oh, so they're just being like super anti-drug use. I guess so. That's weird. That thread was eventually deleted and access was restored. However, uh, they say we're not sure why... We're not sure Wikipedia will capitulate so easily. Yeah, that's weird. Because, like, I know Russia's pretty strict about a lot of things. And, like, I would think that threads like that on Reddit or whatever would be the least of their problems. Yeah. Because Russia has completely banned any sort of memes or pictures making fun of Vladimir Putin. Which wow. is, like, a specialty of Reddit, at least here in America. Yeah, because he's like kind of a, he, would you say, I mean, he, he tries to keep in shape, but he's like this weird old guy. Kind of reminds me of Daniel Craig. Definitely, definitely. He definitely looks like Daniel Craig. We need a, uh, a girl with a dragon tattoo, but with Vladimir Putin. That's true. We haven't yes. done the Russian one. We've yes. had the Swedish one and the... God, the Swedish one was weird. No, I actually enjoyed it. I just didn't understand it. And then it got weird. And I decided to stop watching it. But I want to watch it again. Yeah, it's a very interesting movie. And the it Swedish is. did a good job they with did. it. They know... We're very good, Sweden. Very and you have really cool bands, too. I'm just going to point that out there. It was Sweden, wasn't it? Or was it Denmark? I think it was Finland. Finland? Yeah, we've just, we? we've just insulted all of Scandinavia Good now. job, Mexico. Good job, uh, us. Ugh. Look, Pakistan look, makes the best movies. Look, look who else just walked in. Oh, dear, Mike. This is Valentino, the packing attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Hey, Haley. You here? Wow, I didn't bring anything like flowers or anything for your day. And I didn't put my cologne on. I feel like you caught me unawares, day. Yeah, he's unaware. Cause he's like attracted to you, though he doesn't know what gender you are. Do you know that? Well, that's interesting. How, how does it make, does that flatter you, Haley? Does that insult you? What do you think? How are your feelings about that? It's not the first time. And it won't be the last. And it's not even the first time with, uh, with, uh, Valentino, so. Did did I tell you I watched several episodes of the new Kate show, Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner show? Yes, I am yes, Kate. Kate. And and uh, she was saying, um, let's go up to San Francisco. I take my girlfriend. We'll go up to San Francisco. So right. they went up to San Francisco. They rented a bus, and there are all these hot women in this bus mm -hmm. going up to San Francisco, and mm -hmm. it was. And I'm like, oh, I know that place. I know where they are. Yeah. But, you know, the whole time she's, I've got to hide from the paparazzi. They're destroying my life. Pretty much. Do you like my, this is how I think she sounds. Does that not sound like her to you? I mean, she sounds a little bit like that. I mean, come on. It sounds like, you know what I sound like? Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil. One million dollars. All I want is sharks with laser beams. <laughs> uh, I kind of have a Dr. Evil vibe with my lack of hair. Yeah, I was I was about to comment on that. And you didn't. I didn't. I feel you, you, short change. You beat me to the punch. Hey, I wanted to ask you, have you ever had to use any sort of anti-plumbing device? Ooh. Well, let me answer your uh, question with a story. Very good. 
I shall sit down here on this couch. I didn't know we had a couch here. Wow. Okay. So, back in my wild days, I went on a hitchhiking trip across Europe. And when you say Europe, you'd think of the Europe area. Eastern Europe. But I ended up in Nepal. So here I was in Nepal, up on this mountain, and there was this beautiful scenery. I mean, you could see, like, all of Nepal, which is not actually that much, considering the landmass of most other uh, uh, countries in the area. And I was learning the art of meditation from a monk there. And uh, he was one of those like super fancy monks where he could sit in the snow and meditate with a towel on his head and then like the towel would be warm when he was done Ooh. because he could just generate all of this body heat uh-huh. and then I would take the towel and I would wash his windows because you know <laughs> you gotta live anyway you didn't pull this off of the onion did you no no not in the okay. slightest not okay, in the slightest okay. this is 100% true no okay. um so <laughs> and because it's Nepal, it's super snowy, which is fun. Um, aside from the Asian, occasional like slip and fall, and then like destroying a village at the bottom of the of the hill because it's a pretty big hill, and by the time you get down there, you're a giant snowball because you just keep rolling like really comically, like those uh, like in those movies or TV comics or whatever. Right, it's right. Very comical. Like like the penguin. A like of the Madagascar penguins of Madagascar, you, they totally you, did that. In the beginning, yeah, mm-hmm. you suggested that movie to me, and I watched uh, most of it, and I laughed. It was good. Laughed. It was weirdly good. So, it was fun, you know? Um, making snow angels, and then sitting in the snow angels, and contemplating all of existence. Contemplating all of existence. So, I was there for, like, six months, and then I got bored. So, I, uh, I went down the mountain. I slid down the mountain. Which was fun. I narrowly avoided running into a hut at the bottom. So from there, because I was still trekking in Europe, naturally I decided to go to Japan. And Japan is an interesting spot because... um, Wait, you went from... Nepal. Nepal to Japan? To Japan. Hitchhiked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Which is a fancy word for stowaway. Anyway. um, You stowed away? I stowed away... In what? What were you, like, in? Like, a trunk? A junk. A, a, a Chinese junk? A Chinese junk. One of those cool old boats? Yeah, the ones that are shaped like uh, a junk. I don't know what I don't mean to shaped. rush you, but uh-huh. we're running out of time. We're coming up to a branch. No, no, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting here. Okay, so I'm in Japan, right? And it's kind of a dirty city. Uh I mean, well, Tokyo. Like, I was in Tokyo. um, uh, I was going to uh, the Tokyo version of Disneyland, which was fun. They had Splash Mountain, and they all, and like, It's a Small World was in Japanese, which is not too much different from the the It's a Small World ride in uh, America, because they also sing It's a Small World in Japanese. I think they only have it now in Anaheim. They don't have it in Florida anymore. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, my father, when he was in uh, high school, which was a really long time ago, he was uh, at... You know, you don't need to make comments about your dad's age. Nope, nope. Gotta make comments about his age. Anyway, he was at, um... He was at Disneyland, and he went on the It's a Small World ride. Uh Uh-huh. And... It broke down. Oh, and so, he had to hear the same. So he, over he had and to sing, uh, and it it's about, a loop. Yes, and it was about half hour. Yeah, that and happened to me at Epcot. I got stuck on the Finding Nemo ride, yeah. right in front of the Ellen DeGeneres character, whatever that was in Nemo, and it kept uh, yeah. saying the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, oh my god! My dad cannot listen to that song without him causing him physical pain. Oh, and really? This is like. 40 years later. So anyway, you ended up in Japan at Disneyland, and then you had an ice cream cone. That's I did. That's a wonderful story. Thank you. What were you talking about? <laughs> wow, thank you. You know, and I think we should thank Haley for taking us on a trip around the world, Madame Rutabaga. Yes, Michael Masters, that was fascinating. I fell asleep on the couch for a little bit, then the couch swallowed me whole, and I ended up somewhere on a junk going to Japan. 
fascinating. Everybody's going to Japan. Valentino? I really can't stop staring at Haley's mouth. Okay. Uh, I, you know, you can listen to this show. I like it when she does that. Back like a dag. All right. A dag. Like a... I guess like he said. Dag. I think he said bark like a dog, but he has dag. such a strong uh, New Zealand accent or whatever that is. New, yeah, that's definitely New Zealand. Haley, people can listen to this podcast. Oh, I haven't checked to see if we got any comments. But yeah, we asked for so many comments, and um, you should tell a story while I'm looking it up. Okay. Uh, so, a long, long time ago. Um. Uh, I can still remember how that music used to make me smile. <laughs> and I knew if I had that chance that I could make those people dance and maybe make, a, make them happy for a while. But February made me shiver with every paper that I delivered. There was bad news on the doorstep. I couldn't take one more step. No, we don't have any comments. Oh, well, then my story is moot. Moot, oh, I say! But I loved your little Don McLean moment there. Thank you. Thank you. You kind of you can say, you, we can almost say that you McLean things up. Which actually leads us to our first story from the Micropedia in Sanica. The Micropedia in Sanica. Isn't that a lovely intro to the Micropedia in Sanica? It was a little bit intimidating. And we also heard a little bit of Depeche Mode's clean. Because mm. you said clean. I did say clean. Clean. No, you said McLean. Oh, that's right. Right. Oh, my God. I had a crush in college. Mm -hmm. Jenny McLean. Really? Oh. And then I got in touch with her like a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. We were like writing letters. This is back when you wrote letters. Right. And Ten she's pounds. like, how are you doing it? You keeping it, you know, are you keeping it? She said to me, are you, you know, keeping it hot? Keeping tight, it real. Whatever real. Yeah. Hip and I was like, cool sure. Kids. And I guess I lied because what? what? Hip with the cool kids. And then she... Uh, I met up with her And in like In five minutes She goes Oh um I need to go make a phone call So there were just pay phones then And she made a phone call And this guy showed up hmm. And so then I was the third wheel The rest of the evening As we went To That's another weird. bar Hey You know who you remind me of? Dr. Evil? Mr. Clean I do I, I kinda Cause I got the bald head You got the bald thing going on Anyway I, news I, I, Alright here we go Uh So How to clean your technology this from the Buffini and Company newsletter. <laughs> Fancy. So, since many of us take our smartphones and tablets with us everywhere, it's no surprise that they're breeding grounds for all kinds of nasty bacteria ah! that will make you sick. Ah. Keep your gadgets clean and your body healthy with these cleaning tips. There's, what are these cleaning tips? There's five of them. Mm, please tell me more. Number one, turn off your device. This will help prevent damage that may occur while cleaning. That's... I don't feel like that'll clean your device. Turning it off? Yeah, that's, that's kind of... not an effective cleaning. Stupid buffini. Number yeah. two, remove your screen protector and case. Also not particularly going to clean your device. These are all steps leading up to cleaning your devices, I feel. And you have a problem with that. Right? Yeah, well... Uh, the thing about um, cases, cases you can remove easily, screen protectors, it depends on the type of screen protectors, because if you're going to get a screen protector, the average person is going to have, um, like, a Zag or a Belkin uh, Shield-type soft screen protector. It's basically like a see-through sticker. I mean, they're very good. They'll protect your device. Um, they're not, like, just a lame sticker. But... Do not remove that type. If you if you stuck it on and you had to use like the liquid things and lay it on carefully and push all the bubbles out, do not remove that. It will ruin the screen protector. Uh, you will not be able to get it back on. 
and basically those things are expensive and you don't need to clean under it because you should have cleaned under it the first time that you put it on Ah. and you don't need to do it again. And it's forever clean. Yes. So if you have a case that has like a face plate and that sort of has a a see-through piece that protects your screen, take that off. Uh Uh-huh. But once you put uh, just a straight screen protector on your phone, it is part of your phone until the end of your phone's life or if it peels off because you didn't put it on right. That's good. So another thing Buffini was wrong with. All right. Mm-hmm. Use a microfiber cloth and tech safe cleaning solution. Never use commercial liquid cleaning products to clean your technology. Use solutions formulated specifically for electronics. But what if the solution formulated for electronics is commercial and liquid? Uh, That's a good question. Yeah. Buffini. Yeah. Clean the ports of your device with compressed air. Now, I heard somebody do that once and, and got like an electrical arc come out of the device. That's why you turn your device off. Be sure to use compressed air that is designed for use with electronics. And number five, put your screen protector and case back on your device. Yeah. Oh, I guess these were like steps. They're not really tips. Mm-mm. Uh, clean so your- we were the idiots all along, not Buffini. Clean your smartphone and tablet at least once a month to eliminate any germs and bacteria on your devices. Ooh, what's lurking on my tech? Rethink taking your phone into the restroom. One in six cell phones were found to have harmful bacteria on them. Pass the wipes. 23% of viruses can transfer between your tablet and your hands. Okay, so here's another tip. Wash your case, too, because that's what you're going to be holding. Right. And here's another tip. Wash your goddamn hands. <laughs> Don't be disgusting. Why does God want to damn my hands? Because you don't wash them. And finally, cover your nose when you sneeze. Cold and flu germs can stay on a surface for almost 48 hours. All right, that was really helpful. Good story. And now, this story. Yay. So we're now listening to a song that has to do with Ashley Madison. Are we? Yeah. Oh. What, what song should I pick? Uh, Ashley. Ash. I don't know. Something. How about cheating? A song about cheating. Um. When he cheats. Who's that? By. Uh, I. The fucking country song. Turn my oh, name yeah. into a leather sea. It's like the only country song that I know slash can stand. I have to remember to bleep you because we keep this podcast clean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to press the F8 right here on this thing. Nice. That'll put a little mark, right? Yeah. There. Now I know when you where you cussed. Yeah. Okay, so that was Carrie Underwood before he cheats. Thank you for helping me find that. Was that journal. Carrie Underwood? That was. Oh, cool. No, our do podcast co- is going to get taken down because of copyright. I do a country. Well, we just we play it under thirty seconds of it. To so we got around the that. To the end. You know, I'm on a country station uh, weekdays. I do not. Weekends, know. weekends, weekend. I didn't do any of the plugging of the website. Anyway, oh. if you go to the website mikesdailypodcast.com, Mike's you can find a link daily to that uh, podcast radio show that I do on the weekends. Yes, and then also. Uh, we're on YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, Yelp, Ameristream Live, Player FM, Tumblr, Reddit, no, Facebook. I'm not on Reddit yet. Stumble Upon. I'm not on Stumble Upon. I need to do that. Stumble Upon is weird. I don't know how you get on Stumble Upon. I don't know if I want to get on it. Well, Stumble Upon is. Kind of cool because people would just be clicking like, give me this thing because I put in these interests and they could randomly find your podcast. Oh, Mixcloud. Mixcloud's a pretty cool Mixcloud is cool. And then there's the, you can download it from the Dropbox to the link that we have. All that at mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you want to help us out with the Amazon, if you click on, if you're buying anything on Amazon, click on the Amazon link and then buy what it is. But go through mikesdailypodcast.com first and then we get something for it. Although I haven't gotten anything for it. Yet, and Yay. I've been talking about it for like two years. And then you can become a inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster if you uh, donate anything through PayPal. If you do, I will give some 
of it to uh, Haley. What? We'll, we'll split it. How about Ooh. that? What you if I don't wait? Donate through PayPal. Because you've done get- like 50% of the show today, so you should get like 50% of it. Well, oh, if they if donate, donate because of this specific episode, yes. If you... Uh, yeah. Yep. If you donate, Haley, then you you would just be like giving the money to yourself. You might as well just do that right now. I'd, and, uh, and I'd avoid give half all the, the money to myself. You... But the PayPal fees, though, are ridiculous. Are there? Oh, there are sucks. all these ridiculous, stupid PayPal fees. I mean, that makes sense. Ah. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews are at mikesdailypodcast.com. And now this story about tech and cheating and Ashley Madison. Oh, right. That was the thing that we were working on. Um, apparently, Avid Life Media is offering a bounty... For information on the hackers who recently broke into the servers of Ashley Madison, this according to makeuseof.com. So you know it's true. The hackers eventually released a ton of data after the company refused to comply with the hackers' demands to take the site offline. The $500,000 reward for information on the hackers comes at a time when reports are circulating of two people that have committed suicide over the data leak. And the whole Duggar guy. So I have mixed feelings about this whole thing because, yeah, it's pretty sad that there's people that have committed suicide. Um, also, don't cheat. Like, yeah. that's kind of screwed up, yeah. the whole thing. So, and you know, some there of are these, deeper things that. There's deeper things. Like, some of these people kind of deserve to be exposed because they were cheating. But there's more than just people cheating using Ashley Madison. Uh, I read a, a story of someone had to flee their country because they were secretly gay and it was outlawed in their country. Yeah, I can And they were, they were using Ashley Madison as an anonymous uh, way to meet up with people. But, oh. Yeah. So and wait, so but- their information got leaked and could have been revealed at any time that they were gay. And well, all of the information. Why were they using Ashley Madison if there's this whole cheating thing going on? Because uh, Ashley Madison is an anonymous hookup website. It's not specifically about cheating, even though that's what they used to advertise it, which is really screwed up. Oh. So, so. that was they got promised anon- anonymity and 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 enemies. Um, and enemy, see an enemies, see an enemies, and because uh, they could just use Grinder, because that's. It's not anonymous. Pre- oh. It's not anonymous. The minute someone knew that he was on Grinder, right. like, off with his head. Ah, so there was still, like, a heterosexual thing going on with the right. Ashley Madison. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, he was meeting up with other gay people in his country. I see. But it was entirely anonymous, so they could do it in secret. Oh, man. Well, of course, uh... All right, the rest of this article just talks about what Ashley Madison is, and we're, we just did that. We just so did that, yeah. Screw that. So, if, like, if the hackers are discriminatory about which information that they release, mm. uh, which so far they haven't been, I would be in support of them, of like, yes, reveal the cheaters, yes, reveal 18 and counting, I think, 19 and counting or something. The guy who was on that show, they revealed he was signed up and cheating. Um, wow. Revealed those people because they're dirtbags. But uh, as they are just kind of releasing the information indiscriminately, they're actually putting a fair amount of people into danger. And that's not that's not fun. That's not right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. How dare they? Well, you know, I mean, these are hackers that probably never leave the room all yeah. day. So they're, they're antisocial. They don't understand how people and society mixes with each other. All they see is, like, from the internet. And they, they, yeah, they don't exactly see, like, the real world consequ- consequences of some of their actions. I'm like, you're a human being sitting right in front of me. Actually, you're sitting on my lap, which is kind of weird. But, I am uh, a human I, you know, being. I just, I I have an issue with human contact myself, but I force myself to be, you know, around people, like all these people that you hear in the background of this show, Mm -hmm. these these real people. Mm -hmm. I just believe Mm -hmm. that we should be with... Anyway, this other story that uh, makeuseof.com says that Cortana is coming to your Android 
And uh, if you're a resident of the U.S., this is thanks to Microsoft releasing a beta version of Cortana for Android and making it available to all through the Google Play Store. There's some limitations, and I hate when people, when they're talking and telling a story on the internet about... They do this thing. So it's obvious that they're just reading the, they're reading, the sentence. reading, I'm trying to make it sound like I'm not. Yeah, and then it just doesn't work. Cortana weirds me out. Yeah. Cortana weirds Why? me out. Um, because Cortana, they, they took the name uh, because, because of the fact that Microsoft owns uh, Xbox uh-huh. and therefore owns the Halo series. Uh-huh. They took the name Cortana uh-huh. from a character in the Halo series uh-huh. who was a naked blue hologram lady. And hot. Yeah. So... I imagine her when I'm talking to her. She's now on every single Windows 10 laptop, and that's weird. Laptop and PC. Oh, here's the limitations part. The most obvious being the inability to use the Hey Cortana voice command. I guess it's sort of like the OK Google. Okay. Hey Cortana. Hey Cortana. Look up bananas on the internet Windows 10 It looks pretty cool But I don't know if I'll download it or when And that was Pat Monahan from Train That just sang that for us Thank you very much um, the Android handsets aren't always listening So the Hey Cortana command won't work So blame Google rather than Microsoft My Android is always listening Check, oh, it- check this out Okay Google now Oh, wow, it just did that. It was totally off. So oh. it's totally possible, especially if you have like a Motorola because they're specifically de- designed to do that kind of stuff. However, Cortana can now replace Google Now on the Android home button. Now, what I will... Oh, Cortana may be the best of the personal assistants beating Siri and Google Now in its personality and usefulness, says makeuseof.com, which means that even in its current beta form, it's worth giving Cortana a chance. If it's shut up. I will. You, I'll probably try Cortana. I want to just close that entire stupid website. Now, what I wanted to tell you is I'm sick of Windows 10. I downloaded it when because they go, oh, you can have Windows 10. I'm like, I only have Windows 7. I've had so many issues with um, connecting to the internet. Like, I'll be doing da-da-da-da. Internet's gone. Mm-hmm. Just freaking gone mm-hmm. and i've gone in and uh we work with a guy who's totally microsoft savvy yeah uh he's given me all these ideas and everything and then he told me the other day hey hang in there because windows is going to do an update and it's going to fix it in in like but two updates down the road that's right. what like three months away or something oh, they've got to work out all the patches and stuff he does all sorts of beta testing so if we want something early we could probably be like give it to me and he'll probably end up I'm, it too. but i am this close and i'm making a little hand gesture it's pretty clear it's about like a centimeter and a half yeah it's very small and you use metrics i'm very proud of you well it's not an inch it's less than an inch and there's nothing smaller than an inch so i have to use metrics oh okay i forced you in a way mm-hmm. uh but we're in america it's 15 millis- <laughs> millimeters. Anyway, I am that close to uh, uh, going back to Windows 7. Windows um, 7 was cool. As we go outside of Cafe Anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. And the podcast picture is of where a uh, thing, it, Lake Merritt. In, it? in Oakland. Very I nice. The BART station? No, no, no. Not the like. There is a Lake oh, Merritt BART there station. Is, okay. Which is actually like about two blocks away from the from actual Lake, Lake Merritt. Lake Merritt. Yeah, I've but, only been to the BART station. But I got one of the few pictures of Lake Merritt when there's like nobody around. I got there really mm-hmm. early one day. Mm-hmm. And it's really pretty. And I got this lamp post. You, you've got to check it out. It's at mikesdellypodcast.com. Yeah. Mike, I want to check it out right now. Because I'm Bison Bentley. Do you know that? I haven't been on this show at all today. That's all right, Bison. It's fine. We still love you. Ashley, we're going to wrap up the show, and I'm going to say next show I have a special into an interview. Actually, it's a mic on mobile. I spoke to the lovely Monica.